Welcome back to another episode of Creative Conversations, where I just talk to creative people that I admire about the ways in which they do their work, what affects organization and productivity, how we can create more impact in the world for others, and just unique ideas of figuring out solutions to everyday problems. I just find that having these conversations uh, just sparks so many ideas for me, and why not share them with all of you, right? Maybe it'll spark something for you. And today I have somebody very special with me. He is not only an amazing client, he has also become a very good friend and he's also a brilliant mind. So I think you'll learn a lot from listening to him. I wanted you to hear directly from him how learning more about his family history impacted him as well as his family and changed his perspective. Because the more we know about ourselves, the more we can do in the world, right? So let's jump right in. Welcome, Neil. I am so excited to have you here. Thank you for doing this. Um, I love chatting with you as always. So I just can't wait to hear what you have to say because I, I love hearing your insights on all of this. And we've caught up a little bit since you got home from your trip, but I actually want to start at the beginning. So yeah. why don't we jump into when we first met and what made you reach out and how all of this started? Yeah, that's great. Um, thanks for having me. First of all, uh, we've worked together for quite a long time, and uh, over the COVID years, it seems even longer. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Because times uh, during that during that time, time actually stood still for a little while. So it feels like we've been working together for probably much longer than we actually have. But um, you know, it started started many, many, many years ago, prior to even you and I connecting um, with some some family folklore. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and with, uh, you know, just to set the context, my family has a, a missing person in our tree. And uh, for years and years, and that was my great grandfather, for years and years, there was a lot of speculation about who this person was and why we didn't know about him. And, um, and quite honestly, the older I got, the more curious I was about who this person was. And I noticed that in my family, we talked talked a lot about it, but nobody was willing to do anything about it and do that research. And so I got to the point, one, in just my aging process, and two, probably a forcing function of, of uh, both COVID and my own curiosity, where I really wanted to figure out who that person was. Um, and so my brother had done a little bit of research with a friend of his. Um, it was probably prior to COVID, um, around 2018. Um, and that person had speculated or done a little bit of research and speculated on who this person was. Um, <clears throat> and I just got to the point where I just wanted to validate that. Um, and so I, I did some research, found, found you, um, and just decided to, to go for it and solve the mystery. And so through that, um, through that process and through that time, uh, you know, COVID happened and uh, it really just allowed the time and space to actually lean in on the details in a way that I couldn't have, or it would have been harder if I were, if I were, um, if COVID was not here and we didn't have that, that time. So uh, that's kind of how I got to you. And it's been, what is it, 2022? So it's been, you know, four or five years of, uh, of just fun and, and investigation. And he was he was quite uh, an alluring person to begin with. I was very intrigued because we didn't have a lot of information on him, and it seemed like he jumped around a lot. And I just had trouble grasping. It's like I I I feel like the minute I come close, he disappears, and he keeps yeah. moving and this and that, and almost avoiding me on purpose. <laughs> I don't know if I could, you know, like. Yeah find him and I, I I'm not quite sure if I have the right person and then eventually we found more and more and more um and we we managed to sort of get get to the right family but um yeah he was a tricky one he, it was one of the more challenging cases I think I've had but that's what made it fun too yeah very elusive and um you know in hindsight um uh you're spot on because when we actually did go to Norway we found out that through you know, family members there that his brothers had been looking for him for years and years and years. And this person just up and left and went to America and never looked back and never communicated with his family back home. And 
And uh, so he, I think there's part of him that was intentionally elusive and intentionally uh, wanted to, to disconnect himself from, from his family. Yeah. And so we found him in pretty much, was it four spots, right? First in LA and then Portland and then I believe Minneapolis and then back to Norway. So he jumped around. That's a right. Lot. Yeah. Um, and that's why it was so tricky because... It wasn't the traditional sort of emigrant places that he ended up. Right. You know, he didn't come, you know, through New York and go straight to the Midwest uh, like a lot of people. He jumped around quite a bit and then ended up in California through Portland. <laughs> so he was, yeah, it was it, he was a very elusive guy. And I've had I've had conversations with other clients around this about what makes a person want to start over like that. Um, yeah. and reinvent themselves and it's always there's always a like a, a trigger point a catalyst of some sort and I don't know that we know what that was for him I don't think we ever found right. what that was for him but he, it was clear that he wanted to start over yeah what a what a solitary life mm -hmm. to lead you know um and actually yeah, the way we found him was through his other brother that emigrated the, the family in Minneapolis, I actually had to trace his family and, and his uh, connection to Norway because there was just not enough to go on, on your ancestor. So we had to go to the brother and trace him via the brother, which worked out, right? We got to the right place, but that just felt like that, that's so telling that there was more on the brother than the, the, there was on, there was on him. Um, and that's actually a good research tip for anybody who's watching, right? Sometimes we don't necessarily have information on the person himself, but we might have information on the people around. And sometimes that leads to the same place. So um, yeah. I'm so excited when I figured out <laughs> where the brother came from. I could not wait to tell you. I don't know if you remember that moment when you found out, but that was so exciting. I do. I do. Um, you know, just getting back to what we talked about before and solving the family mystery, the uh, I do remember very distinctly uh, you being able to validate uh, who he was, not only through, you know, his the connection to his brother, but also through uh, the DNA match hit. That was, um, yeah, it was a moment I'd never forget because it just felt like this long, I mean, it was, what, 50, it's probably 70 years of mystery that you were able to solve for us. And uh, it felt like hitting hitting a gold mine, uh, and so our our family will eternally be grateful to you for helping us make that connection. Uh, because as a result, we found a whole new family in in Norway that uh, that we didn't know about, and they didn't know about us. We had made the connection um, through the DNA matching to, as it turns out, it was a twenty something uh, year old woman in in Frederikstad. Um, and so that was the first point of connection, but then it took a little while to start figuring out all the other people in the family tree. And we eventually landed on, um, one gentleman who was, um, apparently the family historian over there. And he said, the minute I found out the linkage between my grandfather and your great grandfather, I was all in, I was excited. And the reason why is because he heard from his grandfather that his grandfather had been looking for this missing person, his brother, throughout his entire life. Um, you know, my great grandfather up and left, left the the brothers in the dark, and they had been searching for him until the day that uh, that they died. And so Bjorn said something to the effect of gosh, you've really, you've solved a mystery, not only for you, but for us. Mm -hmm. And you've helped our families reconnect after, you know, 70 years. Um, and, and so that was, it was really rewarding, uh, really, really rewarding. Can you tell us more about the trip and how, how, how that felt when you landed in Norway? Yeah. Um, it was really an interesting thing that I did not anticipate the experience of one landing in the country knowing that you have a connection there was pretty incredible but then to do that with my cousin uh real time was uh, it, it's it's hard to put into words 
uh, what that felt like. It was a sense of belonging, um, even though we had never been there before, a sense of excitement because we were on this this trip to to figure out our, our family heritage. And I had set expectations with my family, like, I don't know who's going to be there. <laughs> and, you know, if, if actually nobody shows up, um, we have this fantastic booklet that you had put together for us of all the places where our ancestors lived. So I said, well, bare minimum, we'll just we'll follow this guide and we'll go out and make our own trip. Um, as it turns out, it, they, that side of the family was so excited to have us join. Um, and people came out of the woodwork to meet us. Uh, we ended up going to Raiden's house first and, uh, she invited, it, she invited a lot of people, but we had about six people show up and, uh, they were just so warm and welcoming and just treated us like they had known us their, their whole lives and really went out of the way to provide, um, a cultural experience as well. Um, you know, served us coffee and tea and served us traditional desserts and traditional sandwiches and told us, told us about, um, the, from their perspective, what, what they think we should know about our heritage. And, um, that left such an impression on not, not only me, my cousin and my brother, but, but my dad and stepmother as well, based on the way that we had interacted up until that point. We just, they blew us out of the water by, uh, by their hospitality and, and their welcoming. Um, and we had that same experience when we did day two, uh, meeting up with Bjorn and, uh, he took us around the family farm and, and, uh, actually went to the people who currently own the farm ahead of time and had asked permission to be on the property and gave us, gave them the whole story of, of, uh, of how they found us and why we wanted to be on the property. And, uh, so same thing. They just went really out of their way to, to make us feel welcome, to tell us as much as they could about the family and to, to welcome us into their homes and share, share our heritage with them. So, uh, to this day, we just, we feel so honored and privileged that they would do that. Um, particularly as you think about it from an American perspective, um, I was laughing with my cousin thinking, you know, if they came over here, we would probably arrange to meet up with them for dinner and maybe show them around. But it, it probably we wouldn't have gone out of our way the way that they did for us. So it was a really good learning lesson uh, from that perspective as well. What was the moment where you went, oh, my gosh, I'm actually here. I'm actually this is actually real. Because I, I feel like there's, there's always a moment like that, at least when I go. You know, I, I think it was two things. One is um, when we stepped out of the car onto the land, um, mm -hmm. that was quite a moment where, um, you know, intellectually you always think about it. But when we stepped out of the car onto the land, it became a almost like an emotional connection where you think, gosh, my family was not only did they work this land, but they were born and raised and christened. It was the deep roots kind of emotional experience. And then beyond that, it really was the people, you know, knowing that you had a connection with these people that you had never met. Um, and the fact that they went out of their way um, to, to make our journey so meaningful, that was really impactful, really yeah. impactful. Yeah, because for so long, you, you know, on this side of my family, it was my dad, my aunt, my cousins, my grandparents, and and that was it. And so when you meet these people who have a connection to that side, and it wasn't just one or two people. Um, one of the things that Bjorn said to me uh, when we were at his house visiting is, he said, my only regret is that we don't have more people here. He said, there are a lot more people interested in meeting you, and there are a lot more people you could meet with but they just weren't able to make it. He said, next time we'll make that happen. I love that there's a next time. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, having a family go from, you know, six, seven, eight people to now we have this massive side of the family in Norway was, it, it's a shift, it's a shift for me and an exciting shift. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have to thank you for the book that you sent me. Is it okay if I show it? like a little bit oh yeah yeah, yeah. you got it I'm got glad it. you got, I got it. it right here I keep it right here by my desk because it's a good reminder for me um you know I like to create impact in the world right and this is a a really good reminder for me 
I forgot to tell you this before that I received it, but just like seeing all of the pictures that you guys took and seeing the connection that you made and like the family happy together and like all of the old pictures, I'll be able to look at this forever and go like, yeah, I did, I did something good in the world. You know what I mean? Like if there's nothing else that I do, this here is like worth so much to me. So I just want to thank you for sending me a copy because it, it does, it means a lot to me. It really does. Uh, just from like going from knowing, you know, just you sending me basically a name and a date and going like, who is this guy to seeing the family like together, all of you in Norway again, after so many generations, like, it's just amazing. So thank you for that. Well, you know, uh, uh, this is a good chance to just publicly say thank you to you because you really did uh, make an impact on our lives. And part of what we've talked about for uh, for many months is um, impact on the world. And um, so while I while I knew seeing those some of those pictures, you wouldn't be able to connect with it from a, from your own family perspective. I wanted you to have a copy because um, you really did uh, impact our lives um, directly, but then the lives of all the people in Norway and helped bring two families yeah. together into one family. And you really uh, you really made that connection happen. So. Um, I will be eternally grateful for for all the work that you did. You solved a gigantic mystery for us, and and actually changed changed the way we view family going forward. Um, we've had many conversations about going back to Norway and getting to know those people more, and none of that would have happened uh, without your help. So um, thank you. Yeah, it was my pleasure. Like it's been so fun to trace this journey we've had sort of milestones you know we had from going and knowing nothing about this guy to figuring out like oh where where was he actually in the u.s and then to figuring out oh actually he had more family that emigrated to going to the dna and like oh actually you have current family that's you know yeah. that that's still here that you can connect with and i think it just i just love making connections like that and i think yeah. you and i have talked a lot about connection and how important that is yeah, you know, you're hitting on something that kind of we had talked about before, which is um, perspective Yeah. Uh, for me. Um, I went to, separate from this effort, um, I went to visit my 87-year-old aunt last weekend um, who grew up on a farm with an outhouse, and we had a lot of conversations about how different life is today and how when there's so much... Um, not only wealth but disparity uh how people forget where they came from and how different life is and we we think about our struggles as you know the most exhausting struggles in the world and this is a really good reminder not only discussions with her but you know the trip that i made to norway about how Yes, life can be hard, but things are very different now than they were before. And I can't imagine myself being in Ole's position where I don't speak the language. I go to a foreign country. Uh, I don't have Zoom. I don't have a cell phone. <laughs> you know, I just think like, gosh, how do I go from Minneapolis to Portland to San Diego? And what are the challenges there and what strength and courage it takes? Yeah. And when I reflect on that in my own experience, I think, gosh, sitting in front of a computer eight hours and complaining about, you know, having to fill out spreadsheets, like it, you really need to check yourself because life is much easier than, than our ancestors went through. And, uh, and you need to be thankful and give honor to those people who made life what it is today, rather than thinking about how hard it is. And that's not to dismiss from some of the challenges of current day life, but but things look look very different, and we just need to keep that perspective in mind. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I always say, you know, like I think if a lot more people knew their stories, like the world would be a yeah. lot place because I think people forget to have that perspective a lot of the time. Like when you learn about your own family history and really understanding what it took for you to be here, where you are today, like you get so grateful and you realize just what could have gone wrong for you not to be here right like you're one in a billion and like what can you do to 
to pay it forward, right? Like it, it totally changes your perspective. Yeah, it, it's, it really is something. And I, I think everybody should know their story. And even you and I have talked about this. What if there is no story? Remember? Um, yeah. Because yeah. not everybody is as lucky as us to have ancestors in Scandinavia, right? Where it's so easy to find records and it's so easy to make connections. And like 80% of the population loves family history. So getting in touch with people is, you know, it's not always easy, but it's certainly more easy than it is in other parts of the world, right? And what do you do if you can't find anything? And to me, like, I remember telling you, like, well, if there is no story, that's actually a big story. Because yeah. then what happened for that to happen? And how can we put that perspective into our current reality? And how can we figure out how to pay that information forward? You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm extremely grateful to be able to to have the opportunity to connect the dots and figure out my story and um yeah and haven't really figured out the right way to talk to people who aren't able to do that uh, just because this has been so meaningful for me but I I want to go back to something you said around you know the one in the billion chance uh there was a moment when I was talking to Bjorn and and uh, he said something to the effect of Gosh, well, we'll never know why why he went to uh, from Minneapolis to to Portland, and like we just can't make sense of his logic. And I said, I, I agreed, but thank God he did because none of the six of us would be standing in this room if he hadn't made those choices. And so sometimes you don't know why, but sometimes you're the benefit benefactor of of those decisions. So, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a funny moment where we were trying to make sense of it. And at some point it didn't make sense to try and make sense of it because <laughs> then that would have meant that none of us would have been here if he had made other decisions. Yeah. So. That's a great point. And it kind of brings up the point for me of like, I have to be really conscious of making sure my story gets passed on because otherwise people are going to be like, how did she end up there? And how did she meet that person? And what? Because I've taken some turns like that in my own life, right? In my own journey, where it's not really clear what prompted those changes. And so I don't want to become that question mark, you know, 100 years from now, where somebody tries to figure me out and go, I don't know what she was thinking, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it's really important for me that they have the correct version of the story. Nobody can tell that better than you can, you know? Yeah. yeah. But you bring up a fantastic point. And my aunt, um, my aunt makes this comment to me regularly. She said, when I was growing up, and my dad says the same thing, when I was growing up, we just didn't care. We yeah. didn't, it's not that they didn't care. They just weren't interested in understandably. So one, when you're a child, but even as they grew older, it just, they didn't even think to have those conversations with their parents. And so the other, the other benefit of going through this process for me is I'm young enough and my parents are still around where I actually get to ask them the meaningful questions so that I can pass those those stories down um and i find for a lot of people asking those questions and taking time to to have those conversations um they don't do it and it's too late and and uh that creates a big gap in their family history to your point yeah yeah do you feel different about who you are now versus who you were when we first met yeah you know it's interesting um I don't know that we've talked about this before, so it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm really curious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a great question. And I'll say prior to going on the journey, um, I had a story, but it was a very short story. And so it was something that I could connect to, but just wasn't very fulfilling. After... After finding these ancestors and going on this trip, um, yeah, I feel I feel much more fulfilled. My story, my story is longer. I feel much more connected to not only the the culture of Norway, the land of Norway, the people of Norway, and so it's much more fulfilling. My story is much longer. It, you know, my story went from a five page book to a 200 page book. Yeah. Much more, much more rooted, but it's hard to articulate why. Yeah. 
yeah. It's it's that yeah. deep connection that sometimes you don't know that you're missing until you find it. <laughs> yes. I think also when you start your family history, you're like, oh, I wonder if we're related. And then the more you do, <laughs> you realize that we're all related. <laughs> like it's just a matter of when and where, <laughs> you know, because you find so many connections everywhere. Um, I have some very interesting cousins. That'll be a different video, but um, yeah, some some very interesting stories and things that you thought had no connection to you whatsoever, wh whether it be world events or, you know, figures that you've read about in history books, or whatever it may be. Uh, you're yeah. like, wow, had I known that back then when I was in history class that I was related to that guy, I would have paid a lot more attention because this is fun. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right about that. And, uh, and, you know, you and I had talked before about how polarized we are as a society today. And when you go through a process like this and you see all the connections and you see actually that we are actually all related on some point and at some level, it's just a matter of how far back you go. Um, it's a powerful lesson in, in uh, viewing that polarization a little bit differently. So yeah, it's a powerful lesson. Let me ask you this. What's the most rewarding piece for you of, through guiding clients through processes like this? Anything different than we've talked about? It's it's definitely like those aha moments. I remember when that DNA test came back and and I saw the connection. I was like, yeah, we've got it. We've got it. You know, like that moment is so powerful uh, when you have that one bit of information that you've been missing. You know, uh, I just yeah. I just love those moments. In fact, <laughs> I worked on a, a a client project this week, uh, one that I'm I'm wrapping up, and uh, yesterday I was just sitting there researching, and I went. I've got it. Like that answer she's been looking for. I know what the answer is. That is the most satisfying thing. I just love putting wow. on a protective hat and doing that. And yeah. And, and you know, she, she had been wondering about this one last name that yeah. nobody in the world could figure out. Nobody in her family could figure out where this one last name came from. And yesterday I found the answer to that. And I was just like, yes, I've got it. I've got you, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, it's just yeah. so gratifying to, to be able to figure out those those missing links and those those puzzle pieces. Yeah. Yeah. It it I have to imagine it's a, a very rewarding line of work when you are able to impact people's lives so much on a deep level. Just, you're not just, just solving a mystery, but you're you're changing who people are and how they view life. Yeah, you become a, a different person. Like I said, you become more grateful for what you have and, and who you are and, and all of that. And then you get that deep understanding of what it took for you to be here, which I think everybody should should have um, and should know about. And uh, yeah, it really does change who they are and, and how they view themselves. It changes everything about how you see yourself. You know, I grew up in Sweden, um, not knowing a ton about my family history, which is why I got interested because I got a school project and I, I've written on my blog about this. Um, and I went home and I kind of, I was like, we, we really don't know that much. Well, this is a shame. There must be something. And then I, all of a sudden I pulled on this thread and unraveled this giant family that I didn't know I had. And it made me really see myself differently. It made me a lot braver too. It made me like, I remember, uh, researching one of my female ancestors who started a business in the 1600s as a solopreneur wow. if she can run a successful business in the 1600s what am i doing like there's no reason why i can't do anything i want to you know yeah. um yeah and it, it just makes you look at things differently yeah you're absolutely right i, I think regularly about uh if, you know if i give a presentation or have to do something at work that I'm uncomfortable with. I often reflect, gosh, if my if my great grandfather can travel across the country in you know in the early 1900s, not speaking the language and make a life for himself, I can certainly uh, give a presentation to these executives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not as big of a deal as you think, right? Sometimes we blow things up. Yeah, and you know what? It's interesting because it hasn't been that long. Like we all take this technology for granted now, but. I went for the first time to the U.S. on my own in 1999. I didn't have a cell phone. 
I didn't have like Zoom to call. Like I only knew how to call collect. Hi mom, if you're watching. <laughs> Glad you picked up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I didn't know how to do a lot of things and it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that long ago. And and I can't even imagine like you know, that was that was it wasn't easy. I, I won't say it was difficult, but it was it wasn't easy for sure. Um, because there was a lot of unknowns that I had to figure out. But comparing that to my ancestors who also moved right. around and, and you know, had having to write a letter and wait for six months for that letter to arrive and then another six months to get a reply, like that's that's difficult. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's why I'm like, I'm never gonna say that mine was that difficult. It was difficult in my head because of what what I was used to. But in context, no, it was easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think you're hitting on something um, really important that we lose sight of, which is um, we can do much more than we think we can do. Um, and and uh, yeah, our circumstances sometimes don't allow us to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me ask you this. Why? Uh, and again, this is not something that we've talked about, but I'm curious. Why do you think and genealogy is taking on, you know, a lot of a lot of interest recently um but probably from the older generations who uh who want these answers before before they pass to the other side do you see a lot of young people taking interest in this and if not which is what i suspect um why why is there that why is there that gap there yeah i, th I think it's it's a really interesting question and that's been part of my journey you know, of, of thinking about who I want to reach, because I do feel like when you learn this as a younger person, now you have the opportunity to take it and change your perspective and actually do something with that information. So I do feel like when people learn it at um, an older age, they they missed out. They should have known it earlier because the earlier you know it, the more you can do with that information, right? It's like learning anything new. And like, for example, for me, I'm now able to live my life in a completely different way, you know, than had I learned this, you know, as an 80 year old, for example. So I do want the younger generations to take interest. That being said, it's hard to make that happen because I think you also need to hit a certain age to understand what this means. You know, like young people are still trying to figure out who they are. I've just recently figured out, I feel like who I am. So like, I feel like you need to get to a certain point when you naturally ask those questions too. But if I could, if I could say to anybody listening, like what the ideal age to learn this, I would say 35, 40 probably is the ideal to age to, to learn this stuff, because then you still have time. Like you still know who you are enough, but you still have questions. And then you still also have a chance to take the information and actually give back and, and create impact for others and do something with it. Um, I wouldn't want, not that the older generation doesn't deserve to know, of course they do, right? But but I don't want people to view this as a hobby. I want people to view this as understanding who they are, and that should come as early as yeah. possible. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting challenge with all the uh, distractions that young people have today, uh, mm -hmm. you know, making time to sit down and learn their family history and quite honestly, broader than that, sitting down and listening to the, the lessons of their elders. I don't think we do that uh, to the degree that we used to, It's uh, which is sad. Yeah, but I think also, like, it's easy to to say some, to somebody like, oh, just, you know, do your family history and, and you'll, you'll find the connections. That sounds like homework, and it also sounds history. People are like, mm, I don't know if that sounds kind of dusty, right? And old and boring. And I think we have trauma from school and having to memorize all of these, you know, <laughs> events that we feel like didn't have anything to do with us. But if you view it as, oh, actually, this will help me understand who I am and, and what I can do for others and what my place in the world is. Like if, if we get people to change their perspective on it, I think that could do a lot of good. And also we wouldn't have all this tribalism and polarization and and all of these issues that we have because we we can see how we're all connected you know so i think right. that's a bigger part that's part of my my wish i guess for the world is that everybody starts to pay attention because you're not as far removed from things as you think you are like everything that happens elsewhere 
there is a connection to you. We just may not know what the connection is. And when you learn what the connection is, then you start caring. And if everybody cares more, then this world just becomes such a better place. So that's that's what I would say would be my wish for this. Like I love that it's catching on, but I wish it would catch on even faster in the young in the younger generations, you know. Yeah. Well, you got a you got a big wish there and uh <laughs> And a lot of time and space to play there. Yeah. So, uh, wait, and you're good at it. So I, I look forward to seeing, seeing what you do with it. Thanks. Yeah. And yeah. And maybe this is a good time to just remind everybody, uh, watching to, to, to just be curious, you know, like what is one thing you would like to know and just pull up that thread and see what happens. You never know. You never know. It could lead yeah. to your family in Norway, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it takes asking and being willing to follow up on that one question that uh, that can lead to some real profound moments in life. I love that. Oh, yeah. thank you so much, Neil, for chatting with me and for doing this. I think that's a great place to wrap. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see where this leads in the future. You know, uh, I know you're probably going to go back to Norway and continue the research and continue to stay connected and uh, um We'll keep everybody updated on the progress. How's that? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the fun thing with family history. Just because you uh, learn or solve one mystery doesn't mean that there's a, not a whole lot more to learn. Uh, yeah. And on on all sides of the family, uh, this is just one branch. I still have all these other branches to explore. So, uh, so a lot of a lot of fun and a lot of work to do. Yeah. So thank you again for all your help. It's uh, It's been, again, just life-changing and really profound lessons for me and my family, and we couldn't have done it without you. Oh, thank you. That's it for this episode, I think. We'll wrap it there, right? It doesn't get any better than this. So just remember that you can create impact no matter who you are, no matter what you do, no matter where you live. And it's just about figuring out what the connection is, right, Neil? Um, that's right be willing to ask the questions and pull on the thread exactly all right we'll see you next time thanks